Esteemed administrator, you have been recalled to the dynasty's capital of Yin on the Yellow River during a time of great sadness. The recent passing of Lady Ho, queen and consort to Wu Ding, king of Shang, has unfortunately created the sudden need for a tomb and tumulus suited to her high stature. A person with great management skills is obviously needed for this important project. As overseer, you must amass the required burial provisions, quantities of ceramics, bronzeware, and fine silk, so that our royal subjects shall enjoy an afterlife of appropriate comfort. If you can handle this job for our mourning king, it will surely help to ease the painful burden of his grief. Another way you can help ease our sovereign's sorrow would be to fill his palace grounds with an assortment of wonderful animals. Such a menagerie would surely delight Wu Ding. If you pay sufficient homage to the creator goddess, Nu Wa, she will visit your city. Then, you can request her to capture local wild animals for the palace menagerie. You might also send emissaries to other cities, asking them for gifts of animals to please Wu Ding. Of course, other leaders appreciate receiving animal gifts, too. So send offspring from our menagerie as gifts to other cities in China. Such a generous present might convince them to reciprocate with specimens of their native fauna for our menagerie. Powerful chariot-mounted warriors will be useful for military expeditions and impressing would-be adversaries. Perhaps these war chariots will also be a better match against those irksome Xiongnu horsemen. Welcome back to Emperor. It's been quite a while, but we are ready to finish up the Shang Dynasty. Lots of words in this briefing, but they actually imagine to leave out quite a few gameplay things we're going to need to know. The history is pretty good, but a little bit incomplete. Now, the tumulus here, that's pretty much just a burial mound. Another word for that. The humble compound, we're going to need to expand our elite housing, and we get to use the menagerie in the palace. As to the Lady Ho described in the briefing, it is believed that this is Fu Ho, who was buried in this tomb. And this is one of those historical characters who has gotten somewhat outsized importance in terms of how well they're known, simply due to what probably is an accident of history. This is one of the smaller Shang tombs that has been discovered, but it's the only one that's been discovered intact and not looted before it was excavated. Lady Ho was not just the wife of Wu Ding, but also a military general which is another interesting element as we continue to discover women of great prominence in these ancient cultures. In this tomb, there were thousands and thousands of artifacts discovered. Some of the jade artifacts, they think, were more antiques even at the time, much older than the time period we're talking about here. The tomb dates from about 1200 BC, and this scenario starts at 1250. Also artifacts of wood and bone and other materials, and also thousands of cowrie shells, which were used as currency not just in ancient China, but also in Africa. So once again, we can see the theme here of just burying all matter of items of value with the deceased leader. So we returned again for the first time in several scenarios, and I wasn't expecting to come back at the time I did this one the first time. I didn't know there was another Yin scenario. So I didn't really plan for what we've got to do here. We're going to have to move some things around, and it's going to be a little bit stupid, but we are going to make it work eventually. Okay. Okay. So we have our three goals. Now, we need to go up to Tasty Food, first of all, because we have to promote these. We also need to add more. But to get to Humble Compounds from the Lavish Sahayawan, we are going to need wares. It says lacquerware, but we actually can't build that yet on this map. So it's going to be bronzeware is what they're actually going to request, which confused me a little bit at first. But then also, we actually at this point in the game can't build lacquerware even though historically as an interesting note lacquerware was the first thing they found near Lady Ho's tomb so I thought that was kind of interesting but in any case those two and then we also need an acupuncturist now the acupuncturist part we can take care of right away we could put one of those here and we're going to crank up our wages thankfully we have plenty of cash and we're going to take this down and put up another acupuncturist over there. There we go. Now to get the tasty food, we need a fourth ingredient and that's gonna be a problem. 
because we can only get three of our own. We've got all the fish along here, we've got millet, and we've got wheat. But that's it. Now we could try to import from the nomad camps who basically hate us, uh, game meat. Or we already have a trade agreement that we haven't utilized yet with Pan Long Chang, who really like us, and they are going to sell us rice. And those are really the only two options, so guess which one I'm going to take. Yep. You'll take people that like us so we can get it now. So we're going to buy rice from them, and that's the only purpose of this agreement. Buy as much of it as possible. We're going to stash that in here. And then also, we are going to want to switch around our warehouse settings because we're going to want more wood. We've got some hemp. We're going to want some bronze ware, of course, because otherwise... We're just going to keep selling it all. We don't want to sell it all because we can't distribute it to our elite housing. And then we're going to want more silk because we need to bribe, I mean, pay honorable homage to Nuwa so that we can get something for our menagerie. So let's see. Let's give away some hemp for the time being. And that's just basically I want to tide her over and make her not throw a fit until we can get some more silk in, and then we're really gonna push that side of it. Okay. So now let's get into this area and expand, because we need to do that in order to make room. Very delicately. Nope, that's not what we want to do. Trying again. And we want to take the second road as well. And we'll remove you. Okay, we'll replace those buildings eventually. But for now, I need to get the road in a little bit further so it can move by this common area. And we need to slide up this way. And then we're going to put all of those in place. And we're going to take this across. And there we go. Okay, can we fit this other one over here successfully? I hope so. And then we're going to slide over here. And you can see we're barely fitting all of this stuff in. This is not exactly the best thing ever, but it's going to work. It's not going to be a work of art, but it's going to function. And then if we put in the Ancestral Shrine again, and our Herbalist. Okay, that should put up all of our needs. And they will be able to walk around here in time, because we do have the upgraded tower with the statues nearby. So all of that's going to work out fine. Okay, we've got lots of unemployed people. You know what? We've got a thing to build. The Tumulus. We need to build a tomb for the real Mulan. I mean, sorry about that. Bit of a slip there. That's going to be for Lady Ho. But actually, I need to do something else over here. To get the bronze ware, I need another market square. I'm going to put it over here. Now, the reason I'm doing that is we don't have another sh room for another shop here. All of our shop space in this market square is taken. We need food, hemp, ceramics, and silk. We need all of that, but we just also need bronzeware. Or we could try to build a larger market square over here, but that's really not going to work because it's going to get into these trees a bit, I think. So, yeah. This is going to be dumb because we're going to set you up in place. I'm going to put up a bunch of blocks this way and let's see actually hmm you know I'm not gonna put you there I'm gonna do something else oh fine then just move so I can put it there thank you and you're going to be open to building inspectors only. We need another inspector over here as well. So, we're going to push this up. And we'll close you off here. 
and then you should be able to go inspect that. Now, the really dumb part, in my opinion, comes in here. Because, in order to do this, I had this sort of rigmarole coming up this way into here, and that worked great the first time around in Yin. But I've got to open this up to market employees so that they can come this way. But that means also our market employees going around here can come back out this way and waste their time, which I don't really like. But they're going to be able to do it efficiently enough to make it work, so I'm just going to accept that, basically. Not much option, I don't think. Do we have enough silk yet? Oh, we, we did it too recently, okay. Let's get this in place then. Because now that we have this, you know, the market in place, I'm just going to set this along here. Square looks like pretty normal monument, except for it's got these bits in place. And they need to remove 68 loads of dirt. Well, I guess we better get some people in here to do the removing then. We have an ally of Baoji, whether we want it or not. That will be important to the plot later in this scenario. Okay, so we're going to move this along here. Bingo. Now, we also want to get going on the chariots. We've got a couple of forts. One's mostly full of soldiers, and the other one is all the way full of soldiers. But I do want to get a chariot fort going. I'm going to put one out here somewhere, I think. Or maybe not. Because the salamanders are being difficult. Well, okay, this would work fine, I guess. I don't see any reason not to connect that up. I also need some more blockers up here that I didn't put in before. To... Yeah. To keep you investigating the palace. Okay. Pay homage before they grow angry. What? Okay, let's not do that. Okay, we've got our silk. We're going to give it to you. You're going to be going away, right? Yes, joyful. Okay, everybody's happy. <laughs> Everybody can be happy now. I did... Yeah, all that's adjusted the way I want it. Okay. Where are we at on labor? Yep, so now these have all been promoted up to ornate apartments. Humble. Great. We're up to the ornate apartments. We've got a much bunch more people. Good, good, good. That means we are going to be able to, if you would please, we'll throw up a laborer's camp, and we'll throw up one construction carpenter's guild for now. And I also need... I want to throw up some more roads... I want to connect up this better to where we're getting some wood. That would, I think, be useful to us. And I almost want... Hmm. Yeah, I just want a more direct route. So I'm going to just build a road... Hopefully not too stupidly. Around here. And I don't want my inspector going any further than, say, there. You just... You stick up this way. But... Mm-hmm. I don't really want it to be... I want it to maybe come... Yeah, I don't want it to be anywhere that interferes with my blocks. Well, let's do it there. I just want this to have a more direct route, and then throw in, if you would please, another logging shed there. Let's cut you off here, and I'll put another logging shed up closer to the warehouse. Well, that's not good. This is good, but it's not... Hmm. Yeah, let's put it there. It's fine. Okay, because we're going to need lots of lots of wood to get the chariots going. Because if we look at what they're doing over here, they're going to consume weapons and food. If we can only fit four chariots in one fort as opposed to the 16 soldiers that we get. But they're definitely thirsty for wooden weapons while they're operating, while they're building up.
So this is all in place. Excellent. So now we need to say hello to New Wa again, I think. What do we want to offer you? We've got more silk. Small gift should probably be enough. We do not wish to hold a festival, but you can see they've finished all this. They've dug out those edges. And now they're digging out more. Okay. I'll keep on digging, fellas. But uh, Nuwa is not getting the hint. We'll give you more silk. And we have pleased them. They will do what we ask. Well, here's what we ask. We ask you to go get animals. They're going to come over here, new Y is, eventually, and get us a panda. Please get us a panda. Pretty please get us a panda. Wandering around everywhere. Okay, you're eventually going to get us a panda. What's going back over here in the tumulus? Okay, this is finished. And what do you need next? You need wood. And you don't have wood yet. Here it comes. So, Nuwa, what are you doing? You're still, you're stuck on the edge of the map? Is that what you're doing? Thank you. Grr. That usually isn't a problem. It just decided to be this time. So they're bringing that over to the menagerie. Meanwhile, our carpenter has put together this. This is the wooden coffin for Lady Ho. Which, we did find evidence of a coffin that had long ago rotted away, so that works. Then we're building all kinds of stuff over here, you can see. Okay, ceramics are left, but they also brought a bunch of bronzeware, a bunch of silk. So that's all of our burial goods. Then they all disappear magically, because we need more wood for the carpenters on the next phase. Now, we want to take a minute here, because we now have our panda over here in the menagerie. But this is not a panda. This is infinite pandas. So we're going to go around and offer, as the briefing suggested, gifts of a panda to everybody. But they are not equally effective with everybody, as we will see. That's based on the climate zone. If you give them to somebody in the same climate zone, they basically don't care. If you give them to someone in a different climate zone they are much more likely to be happy with you and reciprocate. So one panda to everyone across the board. And we will see what transpires there. But we've begun that whole process. And we have our people in the humble compound. So mostly we're now going to be focused on... Well, this big hole that we dug. And put Lady Ho's body into. That along with building up the chariots. A lone carpenter, pounding away. Okay, so we've got this bit of a flat covering on here. That's looking pretty good. And now they're going to fill that up with dirt. Okay. Lots more work to be done there then. How is our, our chariot job is... Well, they're just about done actually. There it is. And we have the maximum number of soldiers. So let's get another one going. Where can we put you? Hmm. Here? That, that looked like a good spot. Yeah, I'm not arguing with that. Let's do it. More chariots there. I just sort of want to spread them around the city. Okay. And the nomad camps really like the panda. Baoji doesn't really need it, though. And that's mostly what we're getting is uh, thanks, but whatever. But Panlong Chang, further to the south, also really needs it. Okay. 
So we're going to see what happens and see if we get any gifts back from them. We need four, but you can collect at least five animals in this particular scenario. I'll settle for four, though, if we can get four. And we are filling up the tumulus as we wait for all of that to happen. Cash is holding okay. I think we're gradually making a profit. Okay, Pam Long Chang has a response. They're going to give us a tiger. Very nice. Dai Mu of Pam Long Chang has provided us with a tiger. And bring in the dirt. So, how are we doing? Yeah, we got plenty of people still. 13 unemployed. Okay. Nomad camps. You will give me a Saiga antelope. And Pam Long Chang is back again with a wild pig. Okay. Cool. So that means if we go look over here. Now, of course, we are not supposed to notice that the tiger, for example, is not attacking any animals that might be its natural prey. Everything is there and it is peaceful because the will of King Wu Ding makes it so. And anybody who doubts that simply is not in cooperation with the celestial bureaucracy and needs to get their head straightened on. So. We have all of this set now with our menagerie, only the tumulus left to do. And we are almost back up to ground level here now. Other than the lack of grass, it's becoming less obvious that anything was happening in this area. We're going to skip that again. We are not going to give away our rice that we badly need and potentially have them take that and then cause a big mess for us in terms of trying to feed everyone. So, yeah, dozen loads left. And on and on we go. You can see the cash really starting to roll in now that we've basically stopped spending money. It's looking at this point like we're just spinning our wheels, you know, getting those chariots built. Do we even really need to bother? And, okay, let's get some carpenters rolling, so I'm going to switch over. They need a bunch of carpenters now, so let's go ahead and speed this up a bit. By throwing up a second carpenters guild. We're not having any problem getting the wood over here, so that's nice. And here we are almost done with our next fort. I think I'm going to want to build one more after this. That would give us three chariot and two full infantry forts. And if that's not enough, we should have a severe problem on our hands. Of course, we've seen this kind of construction before, where they build the, you know, outer, basically, perimeter of it. And then we're going to, yep, we're going to throw a bunch of dirt back on this pile. Okay. Well, you're done. So let's build our final one. 
Hmm. I could throw it over there. Is there maybe a better place out this way? Nearby? We got plenty of time to look, obviously. Not in any hurry to find that perfect spot. Ooh. Yeah, let's do that. And we are... Yeah, we don't need to have... I need to switch these back over is what I need to be doing. I need to switch you off. And switch you back on. And where does that leave us labor-wise? Looks like we're fine. So as long as I switch these back and forth, we can keep all the forts rolling. And just dump all of our dirt on here. And of course, now the question is, how big is this structure going to be? How long is it going to take? Well, we're just going to have to chill and uh, see what's involved. And one thing we don't want to forget... Yep, and we almost waited too long. Very easy for me to forget on this kind of a mission and not... And you know, I just remember, like, maybe once a year or something like that, I need to throw Silk at Nuwa. Because she's done what I wanted her to do. So I don't really have any more need for them other than for them to not throw a fit and cause a disaster that sets me back. Otherwise, we're fine. And, you know, we've got the two full chariots and the one is already working, is it not? Yeah, it's halfway done with its first chariot already. So, a little over three years into this scenario, and our first above ground level of who knows how many has now been completed, or almost completed, wrapping up. And the familiar sight of everybody pounding down and leveling off the dirt may now commence. Alright, so now what? Back to the carpenters is what? And of course, in comes our lumber. Oh, nope, that's going to the chariots. <laughs> I thought that was coming to us. My bad. There's some that's coming to us. Yep, next level up. Cash is now stupidly high. New Waz is still extremely happy. Looks like I, with those silk offerings, I may even be able to wait longer than a year in between. And, yay! Now there's actually less dirt here. Very slightly less dirt than there was the level before. We can be thankful for that. But of course, it still means another round of heavy labor. Second level is now complete, and here come our carpenters. And this again is familiar from what we have seen in the past. Only there's a little bit of a difference, because normally at this stage, you know, they left 
the ramps to go walk up on the structure for everybody later. Otherwise, they're taking the wooden guardrails off the perimeter, or molding, or whatever you may refer to that as. Okay, we're going to need carpenters and wood again, so we're just going to hang out here and wait for that to show up. Okay, so we're basically, it appears we're going to continue the same process with at least a third level. Of course, each level requiring a little bit less material, a little bit less labor, so... They're going to gradually go faster as we move along. But rather than beginning to build some sort of like superstructure, as we saw with the first couple of monuments we did, they're just going to keep moving up with this same pattern. So what do you do when you've got three levels built up? Oh, you build a fourth. Okay, then. Well, um, we've got other drama. Apparently, Baoji has been under attack. Tumultuous times, our most hated rival in nomad camps is attacking me. Your ally at the city of Baoji. I need your help to turn back these two-headed dogs. That's our favorite insult, isn't it? Please send troops within four months to help us carry the day. Let's do that now. Okay, so all these available, and I'm going to leave one infantry group, because we've talked about before, if you send them all, then you're in some serious trouble. But they said the... You know, various chariots would be good against the nomads. So let's go ahead and send all of them, and hopefully this will be enough. A dozen chariots plus 16 infantry, and the battling snakes can remain to help us defend. Yes, let's dispatch. So it'll be interesting to see how all that works out for us. Whether or not that is enough for them to fend off the enemies. And the good old switcheroo will happen once more. As I'm sure we need to get a bunch of loads of dirt. Amazingly, you know, no matter how much dirt they put in there, they never run out. Okay, 36 loads of dirt. Now, see, it started off at 68, so almost down to half, just over half. At least it's less work each time. Of course, we have been here now for... Pushing six years, over five years, almost six years, so, you know, it'd be kind of nice to wrap this up sometime kind of soon. They arrived in time, and together we were able to fend off the attack. I think more highly of you than I did before. Excellent. So let's see how much we get left when our troops return, which I think has not happened yet. Probably going to take a few months. If we get them back or maybe we have to rebuild them i'm not sure we should be able to get some back though i'm thinking we wouldn't run out of all of them they wouldn't all have been destroyed right right well they're um yeah they're doing more production there but i think we just may have some activity over here with the weapons continuing come in. Yep, we got some chariots over there. So we're definitely going to be consuming a whole bunch of wood to sort of reconstitute here. There comes our infantry back 
where I want them to be. And some of these I've returned. Okay. I do not wish to hold a festival. Well, you're not too bad, but you're low enough that let's go ahead and get you back up there. Okay, four levels up, and now... More carpenters. Okay. Back to the carpenters, I understand. If I leave one of these on, it's only gonna be sh put me short a couple workers, I'm okay with that. So once again, they remove the outside. Twenty-five thousand cash and rising. Jung Jo is allied with us. Let me guess, we're going to get to them to be attacked, too. Seems to be the way this map is going. Okay. Alright, more wood, more carpenters. What are you going to do next? Anybody got a guess? Hmm. They drop all the wood right on top. Yep, more of the same. It's starting to look like we are making... The Step Pyramid of Dirt. Which is weird. And I don't think we have any idea what this actually looked like. Other than it was, you know, a hill on top of a tomb. But I don't think we know if it was a particular shape or if it was just a round mound. I think the area had been too worn down and eroded and everything by then to have any clue. Cause... So... We're kind of guessing at this stage, okay. But we are going back to filling this up with dirt. And at least it's progressively faster as we've noted. Um, no. We're gonna turn you off, please. Thank you. I said off. There we go, there's the off button. Of course, using the industry tab, you know, I don't want to turn on and off all monuments. I just want to turn off part of them, so... I don't think that works very well for me. But yeah, just a few loads of dirt left. <laughs> Bao she loves us. You are a fantastic leader and everyone should be aspiring to be more like you. Boy, talk about a pride or power trip. Hopefully I won't choke on my aspirations. But I do think, now that we've reached this point, I actually don't need this second camp. Because every time they fill up a level, they're just not... It's just not taking that long with the amount of area that we've got to do. So I think I can just probably leave it on autopilot now. If I actually get these back on, that is. And then just the one. I think we're back up to snuff on all of our military. Let's just take a quick tour. Those are looking pretty good. Chariots, yep. Liking where we're at. What are we doing next? More wood. More carpenters. Here comes the wood. At least we've got a steady supply of it now.
Yep, another level. Is so is this the uh, you know the tumulus of Lady Ho or the tower of Lady Ho at this point? Okay, well how much dirt? Sixteen loads. Piece of cake. Nope, no festival. Make sure we're okay here, but seven years. Yeah, you're fine. Seven years. And this thing is still not done. I'm just kind of worried that there's going to be like, we're going to be two kings further on down the line of succession by the time we finish up this, this structure. Of course, I don't think we have any idea how long these actually took. Oh. In six months, the nomad camps are going to come here. Well, isn't that nice? Zhongzhou needs ceramics. Sure, you can have those. So what's the point of having allies if you can't get their help when you need it, right? Let's talk to Bao Zhi. Request defensive aid. Zhongzhou. I mean, we don't need it. But that's kind of beside the point, isn't it? I don't think we need it. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that our five forts worth of troops will be able to handle what we need to do. But I could be wrong about that. Foreign Emissary, Bao Ji. You want to give us three bronze ware. You know what? I actually don't care about your bronze ware. Thank you, but I will decline. I'm not being ungracious. I'm just too lazy to create room in my warehouse. Warehouses are pretty packed. I don't need your stinking bronze ware. Jungjo is happy with us. Excellent. There they come. So now what are we going to do? Bunch of carpenters. Yep, same routine. We're going to take down those levels. Baoji sent troops. Okay. We both sent a decent amount of infantry. Between the two of you, should be a nice addition to my fighting force. Of course, hopefully you don't leave before the attack shows up. But it shouldn't be that much longer. Yep, two months. Jean Nu are going to arrive. What are we doing now? More wood, more carpenters. One month. They're hungry for more land to call their own. I'm not even sure that's it. I think they might just be warmongers. More dirt. I mean, I have to think this is the last one. There isn't much area inside there. They are here. Bribe them with 8,200 cash. We could. We're not going to do that. We're going to fight to defend our city. Okay, where are they? I don't see them. Oh, they're here. Okay. So, you're already in the right place, basically. I see him move everybody else.
Okay. So let's have at it. Uh, well. They're running away. Baoji becomes resentful. What did I... Because I didn't take your stupid bronze wear? You've got to be kidding me. Well, we absolutely crushed them before our reinforcements came. So that was absolutely stupid overkill. The weakling soldiers are in full retreat. Led by their embarrassed ruler. Outstanding. So now we are going to slide back up here. As all of our chariots race off to a battle that is no longer happening. Yeah, fine. Go ahead and take them back. You haven't seen military action in a good 30 seconds. And they're bringing more wood up there. Good grief. They're really serious about narrowing this thing in. I can barely even see the part where they're going to put the dirt. They can put like a thimble of dirt in there. More can be gained from being your rival than being your friend. You know what? Bring it on, idiots. I doubt you have time to fight me anyway, but... Okay, remove that. Tumulus is complete. Your ancestors' remains will be safe. Nuwa, the creator goddess, recognizes the worshipful care you showed your ancestors. So this is indeed a step pyramid of dirt. Seriously. That's, uh, that's what it is. The grief of King Wu Ding at the passing of his favorite queen and consort, the noble Lady Ho, is much alleviated by the superb tomb and crowning tumulus you have constructed to hold her remains and possessions for her journey into the next world. Well, good. I'm glad the king is happy and that he's still alive after the, what is it, almost eight years it took us to build that thing. The legendary nine bronze tripods once owned by the Xia as a sign of their legitimacy to rule, had been a symbol of the Xiang dynasty's power for over 500 years. But now, unruly throngs crowd the streets, driven mad by high taxes and the decadence of their rulers. Now the palaces of the Xiang are in flames, and the last Xiang king, Di Jin, is dead. Now the nine tripods and their political mandate pass to a vibrant new power, the Zhou. Okay, so the whole high taxes and decadence thing is a bit of speculation there. Um, the Zhou defeated the Shang and took over, and of course, we're now going to be moving into that dynasty next. But actually, the part of this that I initially thought was the most off was the legendary nine bronze tripods. I'm going to admit the first time I read that, I thought it was just, you know, <laughs> it's sort of like something you'd read in a bad fantasy novel. But in actuality, there's, uh, there's truth behind this. Quite likely, the bronze tripods look similar to this cauldron, or ding, from the Shang Dynasty era, but they would have been much larger and more intricate. As near as we can tell, they were probably built during the Zha Dynasty and lasted through the end of the Zhou Dynasty into the next one. So there's a long history there, and essentially they were used for major ceremonial occasions. Only the king was allowed to use all nine. Officials slightly lower in rank could use a smaller number in certain situations, and they became a powerful symbol of the ruling dynasty. What exactly became of them is unknown. They may have been lost in a river. They may have been stolen by raiders. Wasn't able to find what I would consider to be really reliable confirmation of this, but I did read that there's a saying that a trustworthy person is someone whose words have the weight of the nine tripod cauldrons. But this is really another one of those moments that, to me at least, struck as being, you know, truth is stranger than fiction sometimes. A corner of history that I did not know about, and probably the better for having learned. So thanks for watching, everybody. That is the end of the Shang Dynasty, of course. We're moving on to the Zhou next. And plenty more drama awaits the Middle Kingdom then.